Oh, my queen, said the royal sorcerer to Hatshepsut, with this amulet, you and your descendants are endowed by the goddess Isis with the powers of the animals and the elements. You will soar as the falcon soars, run with the speed of gazelles, and command the elements of sky and earth. 3,000 years later, a young science teacher dug up this lost treasure and found she was heir to the secrets of Isis. And so, unknown to even her closest friends, Rick Mason and Rennie Carroll, she became a dual person. Andrea Thomas, teacher. Almighty Isis. And Isis, dedicated foe of evil, defender of the weak, champion of truth and justice. Well, as big as this is, I think you'll find we try to take a personal interest in each of our students. What happened at my old school, Dr. Barnes, I sure appreciate you not holding it against me. As far as we're concerned, you're starting with a clean slate. But what you do with it from now on is up to you. Oh, excuse me just a moment, Rudy. I want to have a word with one of our teachers. I was saying, Rudy, life is really a matter of taking advantage of every opportunity. Oh, I'll go along with that, Dr. Barnes. It's called a desalinization unit. What it does is get rid of salt. After the next experiment, we'll show you how it works. Andrea, class, hope we're not interrupting. Come in, Dr. Barnes. Andrea, this is Rudy Horton. He's just transferred to our school. Rudy, Miss Thomas. Welcome, Rudy. Happy to have you. Thank you. Now, Rudy, if you'll just take a seat. I have an announcement. The contest. Hmm? The all-state results have just been announced. The awards will be presented tomorrow, and the winning school will send a delegation to Fairmount. It promises to be quite an occasion for the winner. And who is the winner, Dr. Barnes? Oh, my goodness, didn't I say? The winner and the boy that has brought honor to himself and to our school, Stanley Crane. <laughs> Stanley, we're all very proud of you. And in fact, all the rest of you that entered the contest. Well, now, on with your work, and thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Barnes. Andrea? Well, now, we have just a few minutes left. Why don't we have the contest winner come up and tell us about his prize-winning entry? Stanley? My entry was on the way men can survive at sea. Many sailors owe their lives to this device, the life raft. By pulling this release, the raft is inflated and is big enough to hold four men. Careful, Stanley. This room is a little smaller than the Pacific Ocean. Oh, I wasn't going to open it in here. Now then, what happens is that when this is pulled, a cartridge of CO2 is... All right, that's all. Thank you, class. See you all tomorrow. Rudy, I'll walk out. I certainly enjoyed your class, Miss Thomas. Thank you, Rudy. Of course, it isn't always that entertaining. Now then, about that gun. You know that practical jokes can lead to people getting hurt. It was only a little joke, but it did get a big laugh. Making people laugh doesn't mean you're making friends. People like somebody they can respect. You mean like Stanley? No, I mean like Rudy. 
Andrea. Rudy, Mr. Mason. Rudy Horton, your student. Rudy, good to meet you. Nice to meet you, Mr. Mason. Look, Dr. Barnes thought it would be a good idea if you'd get your class together and we'd take them to the awards. Oh, wonderful. Good. Now, I'm going to go and get a bus, but what I need from you is a list of your students. I'll go back to my class. It's good. Well, I'll be glad to run back, Miss Thomas. Thank you, Rudy. Seems like a nice boy. He is. Too bad he doesn't know it. <gasps> CO2. Ah. I don't get it. You're a straight A student, right? Right. Well, I've asked you four questions and you haven't answered any of them. Oh, I knew the answers. <laughs> then why didn't you tell me? I thought that guys like to feel smarter than girls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, watch it. I know karate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. I promised Miss Thomas I'd be tough. Uh, see you later. Let's stop for mm, chow mein, my treat. Oh, it's a deal. Here you are, Miss Thomas. Sorry it took so long. Thank you, Rudy. Welcome, Miss Thomas. Bye. Bye, Mr. Mason. See you, Rudy. Smoke and fume, direct thy winds and clear this room. Turn back and thus restore these broken beakers on the floor. Rick, take care of that. All right, Rennie, what happened here? I don't know. I was feeding Tut, and, and then the life raft started to open, and it knocked those things over, and then kaploom. I sure never heard of one of those opening by itself. 
Neither have I, Rick. Neither have I. Miss Thomas? Mr. Mason? You sent for me? Something wrong? I hope not. Did you hear about the excitement we had? The whole school's talking about it. You were up there, Rudy, just before it happened. Oh, sure. Stanley's raft blows up, and right away, it's my fault. It's a good thing I wasn't around when the Titanic sank. Nobody's accusing you. But if there's something you'd like to say... Look, it was only a joke. It was no joke, Rudy. It could have been a tragedy. We'll have to talk to Dr. Barnes about it when he gets back. And I don't think you should be allowed to go on the field trip with us. I don't think anybody will miss me. I'll miss you. Mark, Debbie, Stanley, ready, Mr. Mason. Take this for a minute. Sure, Mr. Mason. All set, Rick? Except for one thing. <laughs> now, if you two ladies will get on board, I'll give you the scenic route. Rick, Rennie and I are going in my car. Hey, I'm an expert driver. Nothing personal. I have some work to do. We'll follow in about a half hour. Come on, Ren. <laughs> Women. <laughs> Rennie, if you'll help me with these papers, we'll be out of here in no time. Sure. Ah! Hello, Tut. Miss Thomas, mm -hmm. you know, um, rumor has it that Rudy was involved with what happened. True? I suggest that we forget about rumor and get back to work. I get the message. Make this a quick lunch. Fun. Oh, wait! Why don't we take my car? I'll drive and you enjoy the scenery. Thank you. It's a deal. <laughs> Round A wire to manual. Call the fire department. Hey, 
Hey, hey, what's happening? Beats me. The engine just went crazy. Better not get too close. Well, why don't you fix it? I don't know what's wrong. Oh, I thought you were the class genius. <laughs> hey, I wouldn't go near there if I was you. But you're not me. Mr. Rick Mason, yes. I'm at Kimmel's Cafe. I have a school bus that's on fire. That'll do it. Start it up. Not me. We better wait for Mr. Mason. <laughs> OK. I'll do it myself. Well, there's more than one way to start this thing. I twisted my leg a little. How do we get out of here? I don't know. I, I think it's I think it's that way, but I'm not sure with all this smoke. It's ISIS. That way, you two. A wind put right this wayward joke and form in stairs is acrid smoke. Yes, thanks to Isis. She was just here. Isis? Andrea, did you see it? She formed a stairway of smoke. Stairway of smoke. She did. I mean, it's right down here. Look.
Well, it was there. Be, be careful, Andrea. Isis isn't here now. Yes, Rick, but fortunately you are. I just left Dr. Barnes. He's with Rudy and his parents now. How's Rudy? A very changed boy. His father wanted to pay for the damage, but Rudy said it was his responsibility. Sounds as if he'd finally gotten the message. By the way, are we still going to the game tonight? You bet. I have the tickets right here. Wait a minute. Remember? You gave them to me. What do we have here? Andrea, don't open that. My goodness, why not? You wouldn't believe it. 